Hello, I'm Lelda Smith for the Capital Network. Joining me is the chairman of the Capital Network, Christopher Ryan. Christopher was an investment banker at Schroeder's for more than 25 years. Christopher is currently the principal of corporate advisory firm Westchester Corporate Finance, which he established more than 20 years ago. Now, Christopher, in regards to listed companies, what are the major considerations when it comes to their investor relations? It's important for an investment, for a listed company to seek to communicate with its shareholders. It has an obligation under the listing rules to do so, but it's a question as to whether that in itself is sufficient or whether there can be so much more that can be done in terms of communicating with shareholders and with the broad investment community. Because most listed companies have less than 1% of the investment community invested in the company. And therefore, the more people they can attract to the company and its operations as investors, the better its share price is going to be and the better the prospects are for the company to raise capital, all of which are an essential part of being a listed company. So Christopher, how does a well-run investor relations program look like? Well, it, there's many, many aspects to it, one of which starts with when the company does an IPO. In order to raise the capital in the initial issue, there needs to be contact, direct contact with investors through an investment bank usually, but the way the information is presented, who it's presented to, and investor relations is an essential part of that. And so investors need to be contacted and the information that is needed to be communicated in order to raise the capital needs to be done in the best and most effective manner. Once the company is listed, of course, then there is an ongoing function. There is reporting obligations to the stock exchange and therefore everything that's reported to the stock exchange under the listing rules needs to be clearly written, well presented and therefore effective in, in its communication. It's a terribly important function. But in addition to that, you have the opportunity to do investor roadshows where you can meet with institutions whether or even retail investors at conferences and so on. Uh, there is uh, opportunities of, of all sorts to, uh, to present to stockbroking firms to let the brokers there know, particularly advisory firms, what the operations of the company are for people to meet the management which is again a very important function for people to know who the management of the company is, to have confidence in the management and therefore communicate that confidence through to investors. And so there are many, many functions. So Christopher, what are the benefits that listed companies can expect from a well-run investor relations function? Well, the benefits are numerous. Um, first of all, you have somebody doing the investor relations who knows what they're talking about because there are many, many aspects to investor relations. If it's done properly, it should have a positive effect on the share price and people's appreciation of the company's business. The company has a management team who are intent all day, every day on the operations of the company and doing the very best they can to perform in accordance with their business plan. Investor relations is about communicating how they're going and what the prospects for the company are. And when you consider it, it's quite a substantial function. And if it's done internally, it's going to take away from the management resources of the company. Okay, well, you mentioned the internally there. What are the benefits of outsourcing investor relations as opposed to an internal investor relations? It really gets down to what degree of expertise you are employing to run your investor relations. Now, if you're a very big company, you can afford to employ an investor relations specialist on staff, and they spend all day, every day doing it. If it is that you reduce the size of the company you're considering, particularly if, if you're inclined to think about employing somebody on a part-time basis, there's always a question of what gets prioritised. Is it investor relations or is it the other function that person performs? If you hire an investor relations firm who specialises only in investor relations and the brief is clear, the terms of reference are understood and agreed between the parties, then you know that you're getting the best you can get in investor relations with all the benefits that flow from that and the management can focus on operations delivering the results that they seek for their shareholders. 
Well, Christopher, thank you very much for your insights today. Thank you.